Hello everyone, this is Dr. Jawad. This short video, I'm going to talk about the symptoms of high versus low cortisol levels in your body. Now, what is cortisol? Cortisol, very important hormone that deals with stress, adaptation to stress, and also to our immune system. Now, it's released, produced and released in the adrenal glands, which are small thumb-shaped glands, thumb-sized glands that sit on top of the kidneys. And what happens is in times of stress, cortisol is released into the bloodstream and it goes into the cell. Now again, the function of cortisol is our, it, what it does, it helps us with stress, adaptation, and immune control. It helps stimulate the white blood cells to do their job throughout the body to decrease inflammation. Now what happens is that when you have too much cortisol flowing around the system, the cell actually maximizes, closes the receptors, and it can't get in. So this is called down regulation or cell resistance. The cells have had enough cortisol, they're done, and the cortisol can't get in. The problem is, is that everything's on a negative feedback loop. If the cell is not getting the cortisol, what's going on is that it's telling the adrenal glands to produce more. Negative feedback loop. Very much like if you're trying, if you're trying to talk to your child who has headphones on, the child can't hear you, so what do you do? You increase your voice. You start yelling at the kid because the kid can't hear you. Okay? This is, called, this is very, this very similar mechanism to resistance. Again, insulin resistance, cortisol resistance, any type of target cell resistance, very similar mechanism. Now, if you noticed, if you have too high cortisol flowing around your system, what happens? You get fatigued. Inflammation. Okay, why? Because again, one of the things that cortisol does, it decreases inflammation. Increase in blood sugar, which in turn will give you sugar cravings. High blood pressure, high cholesterol. Why high cholesterol? Because cholesterol is what's called arterial band-aid. It's part of the immune system. It's part of the repair mechanism. So what happens when you have too much cortisol flowing around your system, it sends a signal to say release more, more cholesterol. This is why in times of stress, your, cortisol, your cholesterol levels will actually increase. Increased belly fat, okay? Now, low, again, low levels of cortisol, this is your burnout phase. So basically the difference between high cortisol and low cortisol, as you see here, is chronic. So this is where you have chronic fatigue. You have fatigue with high, but this is chronic fatigue, like chronic, chronic fatigue syndrome. You're constantly just tired all the time and you're achy. Chronic inflammation, again, same thing, increase in blood sugar, which will in turn increase sugar cravings. Because also too, cortisol is a sugar. So you do need also insulin to be help escort into the cell. And what happens, then you get insulin resistance and then the body starts starving for nutrients. So this is where you get sugar cravings. High blood pressure, high cholesterol, again, increase in belly fat. Okay, because as you see here, it's very similar. Now, the problem is it's hard to measure the cortisol levels because they fluctuate throughout the day. Cortisol levels are typically high first thing in the morning and they should actually you know, fluctuate during the day and they should drop off at nighttime. So to actually have blood work on cortisol levels is very difficult. This is why I always recommend having saliva testing throughout the day. You can either have three test tubes or five test tubes throughout the day because again, the cortisol levels vary basically in according to hourly. Now, there is a condition called Addison's disease. Addison's disease, again, it's an autoimmune disease, and this is where you're suffering from low cortisol. Now, what happens, again, Addison's disease can occur later on when you have just too much inflammation that the body actually just takes a hit to the immune system and it shuts down. So this is symptoms of low chronic low cortisol. Now, it's an, autoimmune, it's an autoimmune response, autoimmune disease, so you're gonna have chronically low white blood cells. So what do they usually do with Addison's disease? They give you prednisone. Why? Because you're not producing enough cortisol as anti-inflammatory, so they give you prednisone, which is cortisone, okay? Weight loss. Now again, this is where you're just thin. This occurs after, again, the belly fat occurs with high stress. Addison's disease, again, your body, your body is just not de depositing any more fat, okay? Dark pigment, dark pigment in the skin. So again, so what happens, again, we need cortisol for our system because it deals with the fight or flight response. The problem is with chronic stress, our bodies cannot adapt to chronic stress. 
Back in the days, the hunter and gatherer days, what happened is that our, our people were stationary and then when the neighboring tribe came in to invade, what would we do? We got up, packed our things and left. We walked about five or 10 miles and then we sat. The stress level lowered. And then when it happened again, sure, it happened again. But now, in the 21st century, we have that chronic stress all the time and our body has a hard time adapting to it, okay? So what is the goal when people come to me and they're stressed out? The goal is to, first of all, lower stress. We can't, stre we can't change the stimulus, but we can help w with what we do with it. So this is where exercise is very important. Now again, if you're chronically stressed out and you have too much cortisol, I always say monitor the exercise. If you feel burnt out with exercise, that's not what to do. Sometimes this exercise just means a moderate walk, okay? Because exercise will actually increase cortisol. Find a hobby, whatever hobby that is, fishing, knitting, golfing, dog walking. Find a hobby that will actually calm down the stress. No caffeine. You want to take caffeine because you're burnt out, but the problem is caffeine is a stimulant. Stay away from caffeine. Now again, with herbs, these are phenomenal. I always recommend these herbs to help control cortisol. Ashwagandha, one pill three times a day. Rhodiola rosea, one pill three times a day. And vitamin C, 1,000 milligrams three times a day. Because what this is all going to do is going to help with the cortisol being released from the adrenal glands. It will help stabilize that. All right. So, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you. Hello, this is Dr. Juwad. Please subscribe to my channel for more up-to-date videos. And thanks for watching.